Hey guys, welcome back to the video. So in this video, we'll be discussing about bioreactor control units and some of its parameters under biochemical and bioprocess engineering. So let's get started with this lecture. So as you can see, I have uh, presented you a slide of all the parameters of all the physical parameters that are involved in a bioreactor. So let's just go through all of the bioreactors that are involved in this. So coming to all of these, uh, the first one is temperature. So it is measured with the help of a thermistor or a thermometer. So, th uh, so there are some comments as well. So why, why we use them? So thermistors are used when small, uh, small size and rapid response are required. Also, step that we have is the pressure. So pressure is measured with the help of diaphragm gauges, and the pressure is regulated by simple back pressure. A regulator in a gas exit line. So the third one that we have is the agitator shaft power, which is measured with the help of a wattmeter or strain gauges. And strain gauges are used in bench or pilot scale equipment. So pilot scale equipment is a different setup altogether in a bio reactor. I'll be making a, another video or the next video will be regarding this equipments only. So the fourth point, which is the foam. So foam is measured with the help of a rubber shield electrode. So also uh, we have comments such as mechanical foam breakers are self-regulating and sensor is used to activate solenoid valve to release anti-foam agents so that uh, it's, uh, get, it gets resistant with the foam. Uh, as foam is not a good sign whenever foam is produced, so it leads to uh, we have to face a lot of consequences uh, due to foaming, right? So number five, fifth point is uh, flow rate. So flow rate is measured with the help of rot uh, rot uh, rotameters or thermal mass flow meters. And the position of rotameter float is converted to an electric signal and controller manipulates flow, flow valve. The sixth point that we have here is the flow rate. So this was for gas and now this one is for liquid. This is measured with the help of magnetic inductor flow meters or change in weight of additional vessels determined by load cell. Also the magnetic inductive meters are good for viscous fluids or fluids with high level of particulates. And the seventh point that we have is the liquid level. So liquid level uh, load cells is measured amount of liquids. So it is basically measured with the help of probes that we have. So there are a number of probes or capacitance probes or ultrasound probes. And liquid height is a function of gas barge rate and gas holdup. So foam can also foam can complicate measurement. Definitely a foam gives us a false measurement. So eight point is the viscosity. So it is measured with the help of rotational viscometers. And the online uh, measurement is difficult broth with high solid content present special problems also turbidity we have so turbidity is very important whenever we are talking about uh, bioreactors as well as viscosity so turbidity is measured with the help of photometer and there are many problems with this uh, with uh, using photometers which are fouling and interference from gas bubbles and suspended solids so these are some of the important nine parameters uh, whenever we are talking studying about a bioreactor so these are some of the important uh, parameters or environmental parameters that we need to take care of so moving on with this so there are some of the important things that we need to discuss which is the resistant thermometer that we just now studied for the temperature and all we have diaphragm gauges that we have studied we have studied about strain gauges and we have thermal mass flow meters so these are some of the diagrams that I have brought you for just a demo, just for your reference for how it looks like. So these are, this is how it looks like. So with this, we have another set of diagrams which are the inductive uh, magnetic inductive flow meter. We have the photometer. So photometer, we just know that it is help. Uh, it is help to measure the turbidity. We have the viscometer for measuring the viscosity. So, so coming to more of the. So now talking uh, talking about the inner. Uh, technicalities which are the probes which are present inside it so we just talked about how to ma measure temperature we how to measure viscosity and all of the stuff so we have another uh, possible uh, measurement stuff such as the probes we will talk a study about probes 
so in this probes we are in this uh, uh, insertable probes so basically before going through this so i wanted to discuss uh, about that insertable probes are very important for measure for ensuring that it's uh, the bioreactor is sterilized properly uh, so that we can measure its temperature other than the thermistor and the thermometer so insertable probes ensure that uh, the bioreactor is sterilized at the same time we can measure its temperature ph and ensure its stability all right so insertable probes are up uh, possess a lot of advantages as you know so these possess as a ph electrode so it has a special design to facilitate repeated autoclaving and protein fouling of diaphragm can cause problem so ph probes are used extensively also it is helpful for redox electrodes and redox potential so its measurement it's fairly reliable and interpretation on use of information is often difficult also we have the ion sensitive electrodes which can be nh3 nh4 br cd and many of the ions so we can measure the ions as well all at the same time by while measuring its or maintaining its sterility so this is a huge plus point whenever we are talking about the probes so we just studied about how to measure temperature how to measure uh, viscosity how to measure uh, turbidity so at the same time a use of insertable probe is a huge advantage over all of them so we just studied about how to measure turbidity like we measure turbidity with the help of a photometer we have we measured uh, viscosity with, with the help of a viscosimeter uh, we measure temperature with the help of a thermistor so in this case what happens is those devices are uh, uh, in short measurement of that particular uh, matter or that particular vector uh, only when the system is unsterile so these insertable probes help us to measure the particular stuff which can be ph which can be ion sensitive electrodes or uh, ensure whether which ion is present or not or which can act as oxygen probes also which can act as temperature ph probes also by ensuring the uh, bioreactor is sterile at the same time so these are act as o2 probes also so which can be either galvanic or polarographic so measurement of partial pressure of o2 not o2 concentration and it is slow in response also drift and fouling and recalibration is uh, done to measure all of the o2 pro uh, oxygen demand the particular reaction also we it can be used as a co2 pro we can measure the co2 content we can it is it also helps us in the fluorescence probe so it can help us to detect the presence of nadh it is also it is a, a definitely a probe is a biosensor that we need to understand before our uh, before going to this so probe is basically a biosensor which mainly reacts with these uh, positive and negative terminals of its uh, gadgets inside it so it's basically a biosensor that we need to understand and insertable probes are something that uh, that provides a huge plus point whenever you use a biosensor bio uh, reactor so here we have another so these are the electro redox electrodes so these are electrodes present at the same time the system is sterile also these are gal galvanic electrode for o2 detections so these are some of the galvanic uh, electrodes as you can see used for oxygen detection and these are ion sensitive electrodes so we have polographic cells as well we have ir photometer for co2 detection as well so these are even the uh, probably uh, probably the insertable probes are used for everything like this is flow of fluorescent so probe for detection of nadh and many other compounds so talking about a biosensor yeah i just messed it uh, messed it up completely so i'll talk about the biosensor here in a proper way so talking about biosensor so basically this is a working of a biosensor and this is the principle under which it works so this is a basic analyte or an enzyme substrate which is to be sensed by the transceptor or the bioreceptor all right so this is the analyte or the enzyme substrate that is to be are uh, perceived by the bioreceptor so this after perceiving it after perceiving the particular enzyme or the analyte or the substance uh, it sends a by of uh, uh, psy uh, physio uh, physio psychochemical physiochemical physiochemical uh, signals to the transducer so it sends a physiochemical signal to the transducer and after 
uh, transducer analyzes the particular signal and places it according to its frequencies then it uh, releases an electric signal so the electric signal gets uh, casted in a screen or particular values are uh, particular values are printed or particular values we get whenever we connect it with a pc all right so this is the work of a bio sensor all right so bio sensor can be anything so this can be a target analyte this can be any other analyte all right so as you can see this is a sample this is a bio sensor electrode this is the data analysis these are some of the important features of this all right so these are some of the components of a bioreactor which has the enzyme antibody cells light mass change and all of this stuff all right Moving on with this, we, we have another thing which is the gas exit gas analyzers. So the, whenever the bioreactor or the reaction in a bioreactor bio ends, so there are some of the exit gas analyzers which helps in the proper concludement of the reaction. So these are some of the enzymes which are the paramagnetic analyzers, which can be oxygen, thermal conductivity or long path infrared analyzers which can be flame ionization detector which can, which has low bound of organically bound carbon especially useful for volatile organics such as ethanol or methanol it can be used as a mass spectrometer which can be of oxygen of uh, co2 volatile substances all right so these are some of the exit gas analyzers which can be paramagnetic analyzers so these instruments are specialized for measurement of these specific gases and important in fermentation balances also sample conditioning is important so talking about flame ionization detector which is the flame ionization measures total hydrocarbon automatic process gas chromatography equipment available to so uh, separate in uh, separate into individual compounds also lastly we have the mass spectrometer as said which is highly specific rapid and accurate and pretty much expensive and has not been used for complex molecules it depends on gas phase for volatile compounds so these are some of the exit gas analyses that we need to understand for in turn a bioreactor so we are uh, so just compressing all of the which we have studied today which is the some of we have studied about the measurement of physical environment we have studied uh, some of the parameters which are responsible for maintaining the physical environment for a bioreactor to be uh, making a perfect reaction so such as which uh, we studied about temperature measurement we studied about uh, measurement of gas we studied about measurement of liquids we studied about measurement of particular uh, particular vis liquid viscosity or turbidity or anything related to that and all of the devices that we studied and all of its importance as well so you can just pause the video watch the video uh, watch the video by pausing it so you have the perfect look of whatever it's written and you can give it a read properly separately as well and also we did study about the insertable probes which plays a huge role in a success of a reaction and also lastly we studied about exit gas analyzers as well so exit gas analyzers are very important so there are three important exit an gas analyzers which are paramagnetic flame ionization and mass spectrometer and also we just went through some of the pictures that are involved in this so i just showed you some of the practical pictures that uh, occurs or just such as like a viscosimeter or a thermistor or a photometer so which are some of the probes uh, that are involved in uh, in maintaining a bioreactor so the, uh, let's just keep this video till here i'll be back with another video so i post videos daily so you can just check out my channel and if you like the video do subscribe it and thank you for watching it.